Vitamin D is a, um, in humans, is obtained from dietary sources, from supplementation, or through exposure to sunlight. Uh, most individuals uh, receive about 90 to 100 percent of vitamin D from sunlight exposure, and the other 10 percent comes from diet, particularly fish and fish oils. And many dietary um, products like milk and infant formulas are fortified with vitamin D. Vitamin D exists in two biological forms, vitamin uh, D2 and D3. Uh, after absorption from the diet and exposure to sunlight in the skin, vitamin D is metabolized, uh, first of all, in the liver, and then it's converted to its active form in the kidneys. So the, the body is very uh, efficient at uh, producing vitamin D from sunlight exposure. If you go out uh, on a very sunny day in Scotland and you uh, expose your arms, your legs, and your trunk for 20 minutes twice a week, you get uh, all you require for an uh, individual. However, the amount of ultraviolet uh, B exposure you get depends on a number of factors. It obviously depends on the time of day, uh, the patient's skin pigmentation, clothing warm, sunscreen worn, latitude, and season of the year. During the winter months at the 35th latitudes, uh, both north and south, sun and light exposure and UV, UV, uh, ultraviolet B penetration is not adequate for individuals to generate sufficient quantities of vitamin D. So the total body stores of vitamin D at the end of the summer are therefore critical in maintaining vitamin D throughout the winter months. Because the majority of vitamin D is produced by ultraviolet uh, B exposure and supplementation through diet means is limited, People who live in areas with decreased ultraviolet B exposure are at risk of developing vitamin D deficiency. So what does vitamin D do? Well, it regulates uh, calcium and in so doing protects and maintains bone, bone health. Uh, Rickers was once thought to be the sole consequence of vitamin D, but we now recognize that the receptors for vitamin D are found throughout the body. It's now increasingly known to be important in cardiovascular disease, in uh, autoimmune diseases like MS, <coughs> and many other uh, conditions, uh, including cancer. Vitamin D helps to regulate 500 genes involved in cellular agenesis, differentiation, and apoptosis. Vitamin D affects multiple steps along the inflammatory pathway or cascade, which, which uh, we see in MS. Vitamin D acts as a, as a hormone rather than a vitamin in, in essential for, and is essential for uh, the immune function. Vitamin D helps to shift from immune responses of the T-HELP1 to T-HELP2, and we know MS to be a T-HELP1 predominant uh, disease. So multiple sclerosis is thought to be an autoimmune disease triggered in genetically susceptible individuals by envir environmental factors such as Epstein-Barr virus, low vitamin D levels, and smoking. And as we know, the overall, the incidence appears to be increasing. In a study in US military veterans, the incidence of MS determined in World War II in Korea was significantly lower than in, in the uh, uh, Vietnam veterans. A substantial increase in the incidence of MS has been observed in several other countries or regions around the world. The observed increase is more consistent with changes in environmental factors rather than genetic factors. However, there may be also some uh, influence from increased or advances in medical care and public awareness of MS. Ultraviolet B exposure and the resultant changes in vitamin D levels are possible environmental risk factors that have been investigated to assess the relationship with the increased incidence of MS. So there's a well-established uh, geographic uh, gradient in MS cases, with a lower incidence found in equatorial countries and increasing prevalence with increasing distance from the equator. The highest risk areas include northern parts of the United States and Europe, Canada, the southeast coast of Australia, and southern New Zealand. A study looking at American military veterans, 1964 to 1990, found a significant higher risk ratio for veterans from the northern third comp uh, compared to the southern third of the United States. A study using census data in 1981 from Queensland, Australia, 
confirmed a significant decrease incidence of MS in tropical northern Queensland compared with southern Queensland. In the United States and Canada, areas with the highest ultraviolet index have been shown to have the lowest incidence of MS and vice versa. A logical argument here to explain MS, uh, sorry, to explain the MS disease gradient would be to associate it with decreasing ultraviolet exposure that occurs when increasing distance from the equator. Overall, it appears that ultraviolet B exposure may confer some protection against MS, but increases in, sting, in skin cancer <coughs> risk limit this approach as a plausible treatment or preventative avenue. The suggestion that vitamin D supplementation could represent an alternative treatment avenue has, greatly, has greater practical application if the serum levels sufficient to suppress MS symptoms can be reached without causing hyperglycemia. So observational studies have shown that vitamin D levels are significantly lower in MS patients compared to healthy controls. And 61% of MS patients had vitamin D deficiencies defined as vitamin D levels less than 50 nanomoles per liter. Vitamin D levels have been found to vary in patients with relapsing remitting MS in concordance with their exacerbations. In a study of 132 Hispanic patients, vitamin D levels were significantly lower during MS exacerbations compared to periods of remissions. An evaluation of vitamin D levels using serum samples obtained from a repository at the United States Department of Defense found that higher serum levels of vitamin D correlated with a decreased risk of MS was the lowest risk in persons with concentrations of 100 nanomoles or higher. A further study, the Nurses Health Study, found that women who supplemented at least, with at least 400 international units of vitamin D level, <coughs> sorry, vitamin D daily, had a significantly lower incidence of MS than those who took less than 400 international units daily. And that women in the top quantile for vitamin D intake had a 40% lower incidence of MS compared to the quantile with the lowest vitamin D intake. In summary, results of the study suggest that MS patients have a higher incidence of low serum vitamin D levels, that vitamin D supplementation may help decrease the number of relapses in patients with MS, and that higher ser serum vitamin D levels may confer some protection against developing MS. A target serum vitamin D level of at least 100 nanomoles per liter is suggested to decrease the incidence of MS development in, pa in patients with genetic risk factors. So the Food and Nutrition Board published uh, uh, guidelines in 2010. In the absence of substantial sunlight exposure, they recommend 600 international units daily for people between the ages of 1 and 70, and 800 international units for patients over the age of 70. The panel agreed that supplementation with 2,000 international units of vitamin D was safe in most people, but that higher doses may be required in people with low vitamin D levels to raise the levels into the normal range. After baseline testing, a serum vitamin D reevaluation was recommended at three months um, of, vitamin D, of vitamin D supplementation. After serum levels uh, have been corrected, 800 international units was determined to be the typical sufficient maintenance dose. The normal range of vitamin D was determined to be between 75 and 110 nanomoles per liter for optimal clinical outcomes and an upper, and a, an upper safety limit of 250 nanomoles was established. Patients with MS have an increased risk of fractures, especially females. A population-based Dutch study found 1.7-fold increased risk of osteoporotic fractures and a four-fold four increase in hip fractures. Patients with MS have multiple risk factors for fractures. They have low bone density uh, due to vitamin D deficiency, immobility, and more confined to indoors, the use of steroids, and inflammatory nature of MS. They've increased risk of fall because of poor balance, lower limb weakness, impaired lower limb sensation, impaired vision, spasticity, and medications including antidepressants, hypnotics, and, and anxiolytics. So in conclusion, MS patients are prone to vitamin D deficiency. Low levels of vitamin 
B uh, vitamin D may increase the risk of developing MS. Normal or high levels of vitamin D may confer some protection against developing MS. Vitamin D supplementation may reduce the frequency of MS relapses. Ultraviolet B exposure may confer some protection against MS, but increases in skin cancer risk uh, likely limit. This is a treatment or prevention strategy. And vitamin D supplementation could represent an alternative treatment or prevention strategy if serum levels sufficient to suppress MS symptoms can be reached without in, in, in inducing hyperglycemia. And vitamin D supplementation may also help prevent osteopenia, osteoporosis, and fractures in MS. Thank you.